There was a vicious murder in the southern village of Hopkins. A pair of co-workers socializing and drinking at their job site in the village led to an assault on Marcos Sanchez. The 28-year-old was bludgeoned to death with a crowbar. The pool of blood and stains at the construction site near the outskirts of the village are telltale signs that Sanchez hemorrhaged from his injuries. The area where he slept on the work site had been burnt, allegedly by a fire that had been left unattended. He's a mason man, he does construction, and from since he graduated from San Six, he that's what he liked, that was his ambition, to build house and so forth like that. So he was, uh, well, he was hardworking and looking out for the family, but in the other way, I know he, he liked drinking and so forth, but he didn't look for trouble and didn't act like a normal, he, he drank several times, but I know we can't say he didn't drunk, but yes, he he was a guy that loves his battle, and but he didn't like was an aggressive person when he was drunk. He he didn't mess with no one. He was just a cool guy. No, oh. and it surprised me to know that what happened to my brother, the way how he went. On Saturday morning, Dangriga police were called out to the area where they observed Sanchez's body. He had a large open wound to the top of the head, as well as an apparent cut wound to the left side of his neck. The body had a large wound to the head, as well as an apparent chop wound to the left side of the neck. Initial police investigation revealed that the deceased was in the company of another male person on a construction site where they apparently had some misunderstanding whereupon the deceased suffered these injuries. That suspect is Sanchez's workmate. They both camped out at the construction site, living under what remains of a tent at the scene. The name of the suspect is being withheld at this time, but it is known that he too is from Hope Creek Village and that the men knew each other well. We just have suspicious about the guy that was with him, but we can't say that it was such and such and such and such. We can't say that it was surprising to know that this was going to be his end, how, is, how he was going to die. And, and I really and truly I really felt it because He's my oldest brother and words can't explain that, well, how he went and it really hurts me and like I said, I can't do nothing. I just pray to God that this get resolved sooner or later. We find a guy that is suspicious that we, he declares what happened or how it did happen, what occurred or so forth. So we're waiting and we're hoping that have we have the faith that Things will clear out and see what goes from there. Police recovered a number of um, weapons which they believe may have been used. However, that is yet to be proved through examination. Marcus, who was affectionately known to family and friends as Pee Wee or Garvey, leaves behind a four-year-old daughter and his common-law wife. His younger brother, Esteban, says that he will be remembered as a fun-loving person. He, he was a guy that he didn't like sports or so forth, but he liked fishing. He was, he was a guy that he liked fishing, he liked the sea, he liked go, like, that was what he liked. He likes to go in fishing and when he never he gets a chance, he, he lets go with his friends and have some fun out in the waters. That's what that's how I remember him. He will and he always um he he was a funny guy. He always run joke with us. He always kept us laughing. He wasn't a guy that he was not interactive. He always was interactive with all our family members. Dwayne Moody for News Five.